Good evening, everyone, and welcome. On a day that saw the Dow rise to a new all-time closing high, there seemed to be only one stock that everyone on Wall Street was talking about today. Its name, Alibaba, and its triumphant initial public stock offering managed to live up to all the hype, creating a seldom-seen mob of traders jockeying around the post where shares finally began trading on the New York Stock Exchange just before noon. Alibaba's IPO was one for the record books, bigger uh, than any offering that came before it. Shares of the online shopping powerhouse blew right past the opening share price set Thursday night and ended up putting a value on the company of roughly $240 billion. That's more than another tech giant and top U.S. competitor, Amazon. It's more than eBay, more even than Facebook, and just a smidge below Walmart. By the closing bell, Alibaba's shares were 38% higher. They rocketed to nearly $94 apiece. Kayla Tausche walks us through the company's blowout debut on the NYSE. Alibaba is off and running. The Chinese e-commerce giant soaring above $90 in its debut after pricing Thursday at $68 a share. A company founded in the apartment of entrepreneur Jack Ma in 1999 with just a dozen partners, now responsible for 80% of China's e-commerce and valued today by the public market in the United States at $240 billion. Alibaba's business model is often described as a mashup between Amazon and eBay, but it's now a formidable challenge to tech companies here in the U.S. It's bigger than Disney, IBM, and J.P. Morgan Chase. But Ma said he draws inspiration from another U.S. corporation. We hope in the next 15 years the world changed because of us. We want to be bigger than Walmart. We want to be bigger. It's not about the size. We want to learn from Walmart. They changed the business last century. They stressed the B2C. And we hope 15 years later, they say, this is the company like Microsoft, like IBM, like Walmart. They changed, shaped the world. Alibaba's platform sold $269 billion in goods last year. And its vendors were responsible for 60% of all packages shipped in China. Alibaba helps small businesses connect to new customers and in turn buttressing China's middle class. That's the main reason why investors have been clamoring for shares. They're willing to pay much more than the $68 IPO price set by the company, but Ma said he didn't want to disappoint shareholders and he wanted them to make money. He also wanted to avoid the disastrous IPO of Facebook. The New York Stock Exchange instead taking two hours after the open to carefully match buyers and sellers, debuting Baba in an open described as textbook and seamless at $92.70 a share, and formally minting Hangzhou's Jack Ma as the richest man in mainland China. But his fight to grow Alibaba is still centered on the little guy, one he's often reminded of by a famous movie character. The hero I had is Forrest Gump. And I watched movie before I came here again. For humility. Movie. Yeah, for, the, for, for coming to the New York. I, because I, want, I watched the movie again and telling me that no matter whatever changed, you are you. And I'm still the guy 15 years ago. Alibaba, of course, is now far bigger. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Kayla Tausche in New York. Well, Yahoo investors were not as enthusiastic today. Yahoo owns nearly a quarter of Alibaba, but it sold 121 million shares at the initial offering price of $68 a share, not at the opening price, which soared to almost $93. So no surprise then that shares of Yahoo ended down nearly 3 percent on the day. But Yahoo could collect about $5 billion in profit. So, should you own shares of Alibaba in your portfolio? Let's find out from Max Wolf. He's a partner at Manhattan Venture Partners, an investment and research firm in New York City. Uh, welcome back, Max. Good to have you. What do you say? Should I buy this stock if I could get some on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week? Well, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to join you. It depends a little bit whether you should buy it on what your risk appetite and what your time horizon are, but that's always a little bit disappointing to answer a uh, a question with a question. So what I'd say is at $93 or $93 plus where it sits right now, you really don't have much upside here. So we think at $93, this company is basically fully priced to have a fantastic year ahead. 
And that means that you're going to take a lot more risk than you're likely to get upside reward over the next 12 months. We love the company. We think it's going to do big things. But the price says it already did them, and we actually have to wait to see. So some investors might say, Max, that it had so much momentum today, it might hit $100 next week or in the next month or so, and they don't want to miss out on that run. What would you say to them? I'd say they very well could be right. There's something called the FOMO factor, and we call it the FOMO factor in this business, fear of missing out. I would say the following. You, you have to always be at least as frightened about getting into something that costs you money as you are about missing out, right? In other words, there's huge returns in the casino, but you don't go there and put the deed to your house on the roulette wheel, even though you know that by not doing that, you'll never get 36 to 1. What you're really hoping to make sure you don't do is lose your house. So, Max, what I'm hearing you say is no, uh, for most investors, it is not a, a good buy uh, at the price. Uh, it's selling at something like 20 times sales, uh, if uh, the, the numbers on sales can be believed. But, so there's no fundamental issue that you have with the company itself or with the corporate structure under which investors are actually buying uh, shares in a holding company domiciled in the Cayman Islands. That's not what worries you here. No, so it's a great question. I do like the company. I do think it has a bright future. I think, for the reasons you pointed out, you can't actually buy shares in Alibaba. So buying shares in Alibaba is a bit of a misnomer. What you have to do is buy shares in something called a variable interest entity. And what that means is that under Chinese law, a foreigner, like the people buying in the New York Stock Exchange, can't buy these shares. So a company is set up in the Cayman Islands here in the Caribbean, off the coast of the, you know, off the U.S. here, and you buy shares in that company, which has an underlying contractual relationship with the company Alibaba. I do think that's probably okay. We've seen it done about 100 times. Only two of those 100 times mm -hmm. have blown up. But I do think because there is an extra murkiness, an extra risk, an extra complication, that makes me more sensitive to want a little bit of a discount or at least not to want to pay a large premium. Let me ask you this, Max, because I saw your big report on Alibaba. You've done a lot of research on it. And for investors looking for some of the fundamentals, do you think that this company has the capacity to really keep up this growth rate and to be and to compete against a Walmart or an Amazon or an IBM even? So it's a great question. And we're, we are going to give away our report for free at MVP.VC. So folks who want it can come and get the whole thing themselves. Might be a better cure for insomnia than mm -hmm. you had expected, but it does have a lot of information. I do think this company will grow into a competitor of sorts. However, unlike some folks, I think the way the average American will interact with the company is through companies here that they've been buying. Companies like Lyft, which provides cab or limousine-type mm -hmm. transportation, Kabam, whose online games are played by many people. I think eventually we're going to see them have a bigger role right. in the near-term future here in the business-to-business -business front mm -hmm. in which various local retailers and merchants will buy in bulk from all over the world in a nice, easy way and have those products okay. produced elsewhere brought here and sold. Max, thank you so much. Great to be with you again. Max thank Wolf you. of Manhattan Venture Partners.